So it's about minus seven. It was uh, it was minus four when I woke up. So uh, it's getting colder. That uh, that wind, you know, that's from the north. Yesterday it was a heavy, heavy south wind, and uh, it went up to I think five or six, maybe even seven degrees yesterday. And then in the afternoon it just rained and rained and rained. So uh, you know I was. Pretty upset about that. I, I mean, whatever. You can't control the weather. It is only. It's today is November 25th. So, um, you know, it kind of. Of course, that happens right after I decide to start really traveling on the ice. You know, even all my traps that I got out here, they got ice on them and shit now. So, I don't know. That's not a big deal. But, uh, anyways, I'll just go show you the lake. You know, uh, it looks pretty good actually. But I, I was already down here. And out here, I can, uh, you know, stick the chisel through there. It's, uh, it's not, not too good because it's pretty slushy snow or ice. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I bet by the end of the day, that's all going to be solid. And it will probably make things better in the, hey, hey, Tiger, get back here gonna go through one of these days I'm gonna have to save him <laughs> but uh, yeah I'm thinking in the long run it'll actually be a good thing it uh, feels pretty cold because of the humidity from yesterday and then now it's just cold uh, yesterday was some sort of a holiday or something I think and because uh, the CBC radio was from Toronto not from uh, Sault Ste. Marie, so we didn't get a real uh, forecast from for the northeast. So, uh, I, but they said a cold front's coming, so I can feel it. <laughs> so uh, I bet it's gonna get cold. Like I wouldn't be surprised in the next couple days it goes down to minus 25 or 30 or something. So uh, it feels like it. I can feel it. So, anyways, let's kind of put a damper on my plans. I'm not gonna go the long way around to check my north line when I know tomorrow I can go the short way. Okay, so I got this uh, Fisher thought out today. I uh, I wouldn't call it a, a, a tiny Fisher, but it's definitely not a big one. Um, the first one I caught was, uh, I ever caught was much bigger. This would be the fourth Fisher I ever caught, I guess. And the, this is uh, the last three have been females, so uh, obviously the big first one was biggest. But you can st see, you know, even this animal would leaves quite a big uh, track in the snow. Um, not like, uh, you know, not to be confused with a martin. You could confuse a mink and a martin, I guess, like a female martin and a big, big, big mink, I guess, but. Uh, uh, I don't see how you could confuse a fisher with a uh, martin. So, like I uh, said before, uh, it's not the biggest one, but uh, I, I'm doing this one for taxidermy, um, just because that's something I decided to do. You know, it's uh, should be should be pretty nice, I think. I uh, I think I know somebody who would want to buy it from me, so I'll. Uh, I'll do it anyways and uh, I'll try and sell it and if I can't sell it then uh, well I guess it's just gonna <laughs> it'll go to the fur auction like that for taxidermy and maybe it'll just get marketed regular or maybe it won't I don't know so uh, yeah it's uh, pretty nice there's a there's one little spot with some uh, tree sap in the uh, I noticed when I was brushing it in the fur but uh, not too bad um, It doesn't appear to have any uh, scars on the face, and uh, um, I don't know. Hopefully, the skull's not broken. You know, that's a nice catch. Uh, if it is, you know, it's a uh, humane catch is the most important thing. So, uh, you know, that's a great catch like that. Like it just crushed it. You know, but. Um, I like to keep the skulls, like I said, so uh, hopefully it is not uh, crushed for that reason. Um, 
See if I can get this guy's mouth open here. You can see with the the fisher, see their back uh, molars. Their their very last molar is turned sideways. Uh, a wolverine is like that too, but I don't think a marten is. I think a wolf kind of has a molar like that too, though. But uh, anyways, I don't know how long this will take me. I made this uh, fisher board today. It's a uh, cedar. I think I did a pretty good job on it. I uh, I used an axe to uh, to shape it, uh, you know, to thin it, you know, because I started with a pretty uh, thick board that I made with my chainsaw. Um, one thing is this this happened. There was a knot here, and it popped out. So that that's unfortunate. Um, so. I don't know what I'm gonna try and fill it with something because because other than that this board looks real nice you know it uh, I did it with a I used the planer on it and uh, I uh, I didn't even sand it actually it's just smooth so uh, yeah I just thought I'd show you that I don't know how I'm gonna fix this though I, I would really like to fix that somehow because um, otherwise it may well it won't hold the fisher on there but. Uh, it won't help. So I've uh, done the nose and uh, almost the ears and I'm on my third foot. Uh, I'm kind of having problems with it drying out so I kind of stuffed it all inside itself so no uh, hides exposed but uh, you know it's a uh, that's what a foot looks like you know. So uh, yeah we'll see uh, when I'm done here, I still got to do the eyelids and uh, the lips after uh, this and another foot. So it's kind of hard working on such a small animal. Wolves and well, bears are the easiest. So I'm just finishing off the second year. You can see, I nicked a little hole. Uh, I'm sure that won't be a big deal, but uh, hopefully. So I just got uh, the lips to do. And then uh, tack it all down, and then we'll be done. You uh, you you want to do uh, taxidermy animals uh, fairly quick. Don't let them uh, stay frozen too long, or uh, especially uh, thaw and then refreeze them. You definitely don't want to do that. You get freezer burn, and they dry out. You notice when you're doing marten and stuff, sometimes uh, around the the face and the feet and stuff, it's all dried out. Not a bit, not too big of a deal if you're just doing Martin, but uh, if you're doing it for taxidermy, it's uh, makes pretty difficult. You uh, don't want to. I know, I know how hard it is, uh, next to impossible almost. Really, I did a fox that was freezer burnt when I did a guide course in BC, and that was just ridiculous. how hard it is to do these lips on an animal like this. Much easier if you have a scalpel to do this. That's for sure. But even just uh, from this wood stove here, this is kind of drying out, making it a little difficult. So. Uh, I just shut the wood stove off and open up the windows. But uh, this was actually easier than I thought it would be. I have to admit. I, uh, I feel like I've come a long way skinning. Still got a long way to go, that's for damn sure, but going to those fur conventions. 
makes you feel like uh, quite the noob. But they're uh, great to go to because you learn a lot. I know I'll definitely be going to uh, the next Fur Harvesters convention in North Bay again. It's uh, lots of fun and very educational. You know, around like-minded people. Not many places you get to go where it's like that. I've never been to a sportsman show, but uh, I don't imagine that that would be the same. I think that attracts just a lot of gawkers and people who dream about hunting. And hey, there's nothing wrong with dreaming about hunting, but, you know, trappers are real woodsman and uh, if you're anything like me you have difficulty running into people that are uh, on the same page as you okay so my fish is all done the ears are uh, flipped, cartilage intact, eyelids split, nose cartilage completely removed with all of the skin remaining, all four feet, claws on, and uh, yeah, I'll just have to set this up a little bit, good way to dry, and uh, oh geez, I don't know, I... Uh, I'm almost thinking I might have to flip it tonight. Yeah, I will for sure. I don't want to. I don't want to have problems with those feet. Those feet are already uh, kind of dry, so um, I could just flip the feet tonight, though. So uh, I'll leave this for uh, oh, probably just another 45 minutes with the window shut now, because it dried quite a bit just while I was uh, uh, tending to it. So I used a screen for the tail. So yeah. I'm pretty happy with it, so uh, hopefully uh, somebody who wants to buy it is happy with it. <laughs> All right, that took me, uh, I'm not too sure here. Uh, it took me uh, over two hours to do, so. Yeah, for sure, it took me over two hours, but whatever, I took my time, you know, that's actually not too bad, really, so, okay, good night. So, uh, the fisher was actually not dry enough last night to flip, uh, so I'm just flipping it this morning, I'm a little worried about the ears, they're, uh, they're pretty dry, but, uh, Maybe it's just the cartilage that's hardened up, so uh, we'll see how that goes when I get there. So I'm just flipping the feet first. Um, I uh, I don't know how I'm going to get the legs through. Oh boy. You know, flipping the feet is, uh, you can see the difference between that foot and that foot. So these, this has the claws out already, but the toes still are wrinkled and you still really need to work them to, without pulling too hard to, to get them, uh, you know, unshriveled up to their full length. And it's a lot easier to do with like a bear or something. Not much room to work with this thing, but uh, I'll get it. I'm uh, pretty excited about this. So I'll... I'll show you when it's all uh, done and uh, back on the board. I, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm real excited about this. I want to make it look real nice. I mean, really, I don't have to do anything else. Like if it was just going to go to the tannery, uh, there's no reason why I need to flip it. But uh, I need to present it to somebody who's ever going to buy it, right? So uh, we'll flee there. I never sprayed this fisher. I should have, especially with having Tiger in here with me last night. But, anyways, I'll finish this guy up and uh, see how it looks. 
Well, there was a there was a while I almost thought that wasn't uh, just wasn't gonna happen. Getting the getting the front feet through the the armpits was the hardest part for sure. I'm gonna do it differently next time. I'm gonna cut it f closer to the armpit. Um, normally you just do up to the joint right here, but if you go all the way, then, then that would have been much easier. I I don't know if that's how you do it or not. I'll uh, I'll look in that fur handling book, uh, see how you do a, a wolf, or a wolverine I guess would be uh, closer. Um, but uh, you know it's looking pretty good, I'm just kind of straightening it all out. The ears were pretty hard too, um, to do, because they were so hard. Um, now I'm just trying to get them kind of formed a little bit. I already put it on the board once just to help straighten it out a little bit. but. Uh, you know, I want to get all these wrinkles out. I want it to really look good. I did have to uh, dampen the armpits a little bit, as well as the the ears. So, uh, you know, in uh, in a way, I'm a little worried about that. I almost want to uh, so you can spread the cartilage from the skin, even when it with it flipped kind of just makes the ear like a bubble. So I'm thinking I might just do that to let it dry a little bit and then I'll come back uh, in a little bit and uh, squeeze it back together to form it. You know, I just want everything to look good. Um, I don't really know what to do with the eyelids. Uh, you know, they kind of just shriveled up a little bit. But uh, it'll work, I think. So I'll just mess with it a little bit more. I already did the back feet where I stuffed it with a newspaper. And then when I put it on the board, I will uh, put tacks between each one to uh, spread it out. Because it's not completely dry yet, right? I want it so when it's dry, it's like, uh, looks nice. Because right now you can see like the front, the front foot, you know, the claws are all haggard looking and shit like that. Just by stuffing it will help a lot. But then uh, obviously tacking it out. Uh, will make will help a lot and uh, I'll get this lip all good and yeah I'm pretty uh, pretty stoked give it a little brushing and looks good I think it'll make a good mountain I think uh... oh yeah just putting newspaper in the in the feet makes a big difference But you can see the nose, what I mean, you know. It looks all it looks all good, but there's no cartilage in there. Like when it's inside out, you know, there's just it's just hide. But when it you would think that it looks uh there'd be part of it missing. But it's not. That's hard to do. You have to remove the cartilage kind of in two pieces. hard for me to do. Anyways. A moose is pretty hard to do. Um, because you got to get so much of that nose on there because a moose's nose has such, you know, big opening. A moose, um, a moose takes quite a while. Like, I mean, if you're doing it uh, for taxidermy, right? Obviously, that's what I mean. You gotta screw around with everything quite a bit. Otherwise, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be on there and it'll be good. And the end result, after it's tanned, will end up the same. But, you know, I'm not tanning. I'm not having it tanned for myself. I'm trying to sell it, so... I need it to look as uh, presentable as possible. So, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I'll I'll, uh, I'll do my best to uh, try and get some feedback on what I did. You know, not just be like, oh, this that's what it, uh, that's what it's worth or whatever. You know, I want to uh, make sure that I get 
get that tail off the wet ground. I, I want to make sure I get some feedback and uh, so I know if I did a good job, uh, tips and pointers, you know, I'll take it to a, uh, I'll take it to a taxidermist myself just to, uh, you know, just say, hey, can I pick your brain for a minute? But uh, I am going to just sell it dried. I'm not going to get it tanned myself. Um, well, maybe I should actually. I don't know. I, that'll be another question I have, I guess. I don't want it to spoil just being dry, but uh, I think it'll last quite a while just being dry. It's coming together. There's quite a few like wrinkles in the neck that I had to straighten out because, uh, like I said, it was a little over dry. So uh, when you're flipping it, it really puts some uh, heavy creases in it. But uh, it's coming together. I had to dampen the nose a little bit too, but you know it's already uh, dried out. All the spots where I dampened, it already feels dry. So that's good. All right. Okay, so I uh, formed the ears the best I could. I pressed them back together. They're nice and dry. Um, I uh, I didn't tack out the feet. I didn't really see how I could do that, but um, uh, I found just by really stuffing them with newspaper, like there's quite a bit in each one, that it really made them sit right. Um, and then I put the arm boards back in just to make it dry straight so the one's not hanging a little crooked or anything you know so uh maybe i already said this but like everything is on this uh this animal right so like right there that's the you know the vagina hole and um uh, maybe i should do something to to uh keep that all straight and then um, obviously on the other side right there is the asshole you know you got to skin out the asshole too because uh, if they make a full body mount then uh, everything gets included so I'm uh, pretty happy with this you know turned out better than I thought I have done wolves and bears before and stuff but uh, not uh, not really the same, I guess. A, wo a wolf is uh, quite a bit of work, but... Yeah, can't wait to uh, see what happens with this guy.